In this video, I will introduce you to GIMP, the best alternative to Adobe Photoshop. Both Adobe Photoshop and GIMP are image editing programs. GIMP is free while Adobe Photoshop is a paid program. Photoshop is a little bit more robust and offers a little more tools. But honestly, for a greater majority of users of image editing programs, we will not need above what the free GIMP software offers. You can use both programs for artwork like editing images, producing computer-generated painting images requiring pencil and brush tools, and other things. To download GIMP, go to www.gimp.org. I'm going to put a link in the description below for you. If you click the download button, you come to this next page, and there you're going to see the different possibilities of download. The first thing you notice that it is advantageous because unlike Photoshop, it is available for all platforms, beginning from Linux, OS X, and Microsoft Windows. You can download from BitTorrent or you can download directly. I choose to download directly usually and the installation is just like for any other normal program. The one thing you should note is that the program is updated frequently so there are chances that the version you may have downloaded while watching this video is a newer version. However, the tools and concepts and look of the program will not change very much across versions of the software, making this tutorial relevant at all times. When you install and start game for the first time, it will take very long to load up. If you look at the dialog box being shown by the program at a time, you will notice that it is indexed in all fonts of your computer. Just be patient till it does start to the end. Let us go now to know a little bit more about GIMP. If you feel I'm moving too quick, please pause the video to try out what I've shown and then resume watching afterwards. When GIMP opens, you are going to see three windows that look like this. From the left to the right, the middle layer has a normal menu you have for programs with File, Edit, Select, View, Image, Layer, Colors, etc. To simplify working, you can consolidate all three windows into a single window. This can be done by enabling the single window mode so that all these windows will be docked inside the game's main window and ease the workflow. To do that, you go to Windows and then select single window mode. It is a matter of personal preference how you want it to look. However, let us continue with all three windows open. A common problem that may occur can be you mistakenly closing one of the toolboxes. When you do this and restart, you will not see them again. A solution to that will be to restore the windows to their default. To do that, go to the Edit menu and then go down to Preferences and click and then select Window Management. Then go to Reset Saved Window Positions to Default Values. Click. Then click OK to close the Preferences dialog and restart GIMP for everything to be at its default. You have the main workspace area in the center and on the left and right you have dialog boxes. On the left, we have the toolbox with different tools which can be selected for different purposes. And here you see the different tools. Below is a color swatch with the foreground and background color and this will be used for painting pixels. Once you select the tool up in the toolbox, various options for that particular tool will be displayed in the Tool Options menu, allowing you to access more functionality. So here, each time you click a different tool, you'll notice that the options in the Tool Options box will change. So go further and click the different tools and see how the Tools option box changes. On the right side are different tabs. Clicking on them allows you to see different dialogues associated to them. Go ahead and click on them one by one and see what dialogues are associated with them. To begin exploring GIMP, let us start by creating a new image. To do this, you go to File and then New. It will ask you for an image size. You can type in the values or pick one up from presets in the template here above by clicking the drop down and you're going to see a long list of presets. So select an image size and then go down and click on Advanced Options. Then notice that the color space is RGB color. You can select the background from here. For most of our projects, we will need white as background. 
go ahead and click on it and select white. Then click on OK to create an image with the information you've entered. So you can pull the center window to look a little bit bigger, although this is not going to change the size of the final image. Here in the center is the canvas on which you can draw. You may see a window like this based on the level of your zoom, or you may not see it. The line around and the gray areas are not part of the image, but they are part of the program. You can zoom by going down here and then selecting a percentage to zoom by clicking the drop down. Alternatively, you can also hold the control key down and scroll the middle wheel of your mouse to zoom. Zooming can help you when you're trying to look at a whole picture or particular areas of a picture. To change the background color, select the bucket fill tool from the toolbox and then go down and click on the color swatch below the toolbox to change the foreground color. Select the color you want by clicking on here and selecting. You also have the possibility of choosing from the wheel or here. You can also pick from the sliders and move them to change the values of the different colors. Most often colors come with exact values. You can select the sliders here and move them to particular RGB values. So let's go ahead here and choose say green or we can go here and pick a color. Another cute way is to enter the hexadecimal color code. If you look down here, you see a color code in HTML notation. One place to get color code is here at w3schools.com. I'm going to put the link down in the description for you. Go there and you can choose color names or color values. If you click on color names and you scroll down, you are going to see different colors with their color values along them. We also have the alternative of choosing color values. Click on color values and then scroll down and you are going to see the different values for the different colors. If we look on the right here, we see color picker and we're going to come to that in a minute. We can copy an HTML RGB value here and after copying, we go back to GIMP and paste. So if we paste in GIMP by highlighting the color that was first there and take control V to paste and go OK. So let me pull this to the side so that we see everything. And now we go OK. We notice that the color has changed. We now have the foreground color being what we took from the RGB value. Here we have a current and an old color we can hit OK. Just in this case, they are not very different from each other. Another possibility is using plugins from Firefox or Chrome browsers. Go and search for plugin called Color Picker and install. Once installed, you can use it to copy the RGB color code from your particular browser. For Firefox, it is called ColorZilla. So you can go click on it and then click on Page Color Picker and when you hover over the page, you're going to see up on the page the changes in the RGB values. So to pick a color, click on ColorZilla plugin, then go to Page Color, and then you go down to the color of your interest and click on it, and it's going to copy the RGB color values on the clipboard. You go now to the color swatch, and then you can paste in that value and hit OK, and you're going to have the value you copied. And here we have the current and the old value. Once you've selected your color, go to the background and left click to have the background have your new color. We can go in here and increase the zoom to about 80. Now let us draw a square and apply a color to it. We go here and pick the rectangle select tool, click on it, and then go to our background color, left click and then pull it on the page. And then we have these handles here below and on top and to the corners, which we can use to resize the object. Notice that when you picked the rectangle select tool, the tool options here give more possibilities to control the tool with the mode, anti-aliasing, feather edges, rounded corners, expand from center, aspect ratio, etc. To give our rectangle a color, we go now to the color swatch, click on it, and then select a new color. Let's say we take the color red, we click on that, 
and down here we're going to see the old color and the current color. Once satisfied we go and select OK and then we'll go now and pick the bucket fill tool by clicking on it and go now to the area we drew and left clicked on it to give it the new color. To get rid of these lines what we have to do is to go up to select and then choose known and the lines have gone. To continue let us look at layers. GIM can work with layers allowing you to manipulate images on different layers separately without altering those on other layers. You can create a new layer by going to layer, the new layer or shift control N or by going down here to the right pane and selecting this icon that says new layer. Click to select a new layer. You notice that you can name it up here. Leave the options as they are and then go down and click OK. You now have your new layer up here which is transparent and you can double click on it to rename it if you wish. Let us rename it layer 1. And with the layers you can click on the eye symbol to allow you to see a layer or not to see it. This way you can take some layers of the way if they are interfering with your work. Let us go now and create an ellipse or precisely a cycle. We pick the ellipse tool and then go and left click on the background and pull to create an ellipse. And we are going to resize this and we can resize it using the handles here just like we did before for the rectangle and we can grab it to position it where we wish it to be. So let us go now and click on the color swatch and choose a different color and in this case I will take the wheel and then go and choose a yellowish or golden color. Click on the triangle in there and then go OK and then go and choose the bucket fill tool and go now to my circle and left click on it to give it a new color. To take away the dotted lines we go to select and then choose none and we now have our circle. Let us write some text. Select the text tool on the left pane, click on it, go back to the image and left click and draw an area where you write the text. As before you can resize with the handles by pulling from one side or the other. So let's go ahead and choose the color. We can choose it up here directly or we can go down here in the tool options and choose. So I choose yellow and go OK. Well, let's click again here and then go to the wheel tool and give it a lighter yellow. So I go OK. And we can change the font size here by making it a little bit bigger. Now I click into the text area and then I write this is text. And we notice that it goes beyond the area we selected. No problem. We can have it back by having the handle here on the right hand side and pulling so that the text fits into the area. And I take away the extra T. Notice the lines we have around. In this case if we go to select we notice that we cannot select none. To take away these lines you go here on the right side where you have background and where there is a white space and click on it and the lines are away. To reposition objects in a layer, select the layer, go to the toolbox and then click on the move tool. Go to the page and grab the object and move it where you want to move it to. You can repeat the same thing for the text. Go and select the move tool and then come to the text and in this case you have to be careful to click exactly on the text. If you click elsewhere you're going to move the background. So you click on the text and you can grab it and move it whichever way you want to move it. So here I click on the text again exactly and I can move it. But if I click on the background you notice that we are moving the background totally. So the trick here is never to click anywhere out of the text because by doing that you'll be selecting the background. So for that reason it will be advisable to have the background free and begin to draw most objects on other layers. As seen in previous tutorials, GIMP unlike Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator will produce bitmap graphics. And what is the difference? Let's zoom in here to about 800 and if we look at the image where we had straight lines they seem apparently straight but where we have the circle we have like steps in which you have a gradual transition from the green to the yellow. This is what is called anti-aliasing. 
like smoothing the edges. If we didn't select anti-aliasing, we're going to have jacked at edges here, like really steps. So what you see in here are like the pixels. And because we choose anti-aliasing, we had a gradual transition. So we go back to 80. And now we're going to see how to save. To save, you go to File and then go to Save As. And then here you notice that you have .xcf. And why will you want to choose this? You do this so that you can still go to the image and make changes with all the information still stored, the layers especially. Once you export to an image like PNG or TIFF, you lose the layers and the possibility to edit the original image. It is always advisable to save two files while working. One, the image file you use for your documents, which you will get by exporting, and the other, the XCF file, which has the original images. The XCF allows you to always come back to it and make changes if you wish. Let us name this file Drawings2, and then we save at the desktop. Go down here, save. And if you click on the save option and nothing is happening, just go a little bit to the side and then click on it again. Another way to save is to go to file and then we go to export as. And down here, you notice select file type by extension. What this means is that you can append the file type ending to a file and the program is going to understand what file you want to give it to. So in this case, we write TIFF, T-I-F, and then we go export. And you're going to have this window that will come up with different possibilities of compression from known LZW, Packbates, Deflate, JPEG. For here, we want to choose LZW, which is lossless compression, as it does not compromise image quality. Never use JPEG compression, as it can reduce image quality and lead to loss of data. Once you've chosen, go down to export. Another way to export is to go to file and then export. And here we want to choose PNG and then go to export. And here we are going to have this dialog box, which we leave as they are. And we just make sure the compression level is at maximum at nine. Then we go export. And the last possibility is to go to file and then export as and we want to choose JPEG, so we change PNG to JPEG, and then we go to export, and we're going to have this dialog box coming up. We leave everything like it is. The quality should be maximum, and if we click on advanced options, we're going to see other possibilities of saving the image. It will be good to leave this as they are, and then go to export, but it is advisable never to use JPEG, as with this, you lose a lot of image data. To sum up, you always have to save your image in the native.xcf of GIMP so that you can come back to it and do editing. With this, you do not lose data. And if you have to export images for your work, TIFF, which has lossless compression, is better than JPEG, which has lossy compression. So to conclude, GIMP is an awesome software. I have just shown you the basics of some of the things you can do with GIMP here. In other videos, we are going to go deeper into other things. If you loved what you've seen, please click on that subscriber button below for more tutorials. Otherwise, see you in the next video.